Hi, I'm Eileen Roach. I'm an embroidery expert, an online educator, and editor of a, of a magazine on embroidery. And I'm here to share with you today a very cool technique that I call modern cut work. Well, you might wonder what's so modern about it. Well, first of all, the layout is pretty modern, but also the technique is done on an embroidery machine and it's so fast, you're not going to believe how you can do this. First off, here's my uh, beautiful sample. I'm quite proud of this. This is on silk fabric, which is a, an adventure for me because I usually do cottons or knits, but um, the silk is a wonderful fabric. You know, as soft and supple as it is, it's a very strong fiber. So don't be afraid to embroider on it. So let's take a look at how we get started on making a garment like this. First, you're gonna need an embroidery pattern. And you want to draw the pattern full size so that you have the double width. And then print a template of the embroidery design and center that on the pattern itself. And that way you can hold this up on your figure. You could put it on the dress form and take a look that make sure the embroidery is landing in a position on the garment that's flattering to, to you. And once you have that done, it's time to hoop that fabric. And you're going to cut out the fabric, you know, larger than the pattern piece itself so that you can actually do the embroidery because you'll sew it together later. Now let's get to, down to the technique part. And this is what's so fun about it. It can be done automatically at the machine, not only with embroidery, but actually with knives that are inserted where the needles go. So on my machine here, I've replaced the first four needles. Now I know this is kind of an industrial looking machine, but I do an awful lot of embroidery. And so it was worth it to me to use a machine like this because I can accomplish a lot more in, in one day than I can on a single needle machine. However, you can use the same technique on a single needle machine. On this 10 needle, I have replaced the first four needles with blades. And if you were to examine those blades, you would notice that each blade is at a different angle. One is 90, 45, 180, and I don't really know all the math, but they do the job that I need them to do. And then I've uh, put an embroidery design that was designed specifically for cut work. And the first thing it's going to do is cut the fabric right all the way through. So let's go ahead and get started. And this only takes a minute. I'm not going to do that whole full bodice that you see on the beautiful mannequin here, but I'm going to just show three small ovals so you can get a look at how it's done. So right now it's doing a running stitch around each of those ovals and it is uh, cutting it. Well, I guess the first color that it's actually doing is stabilizing it. So it's doing that running stitch around the three ovals, then it'll come back with the blades and cut it. I have already stitched that out right here. So while it's still in the hoop, you take a, a lint roller and you just swipe it right across the embroidery. And you can see that the fabric has come right out of those holes. Now the tearaway stabilizer is still in place. That's okay, I'll just pop it out the back. And at that point, I would then attach the hoop back to the machine and stitch the next color. And right before I stitch it, I would add a piece of water soluble stabilizer. Now this is mesh type, but it's not adhesive. So I just place it right on top of the embroiderable area and I'll even tape it down just to keep it out of you know, harm's way. I wouldn't want it to jump out of the needle area. And then I place the whole hoop back on the machine and stitch the next color, which is the satin stitching, it finishes it. Now you can see here, that the water soluble stabil stabilizer is still in place in the holes and on top. My tearaways on the back, but at this point, I just tear it off the back and then I would rinse this in water soluble stabilizer and there's my finished design. My three holes are cut perfectly. The back is secure and then I go on to complete the garment. But if you have a single needle machine, you can still do this in the traditional way and that's to stitch that first outline and then take the scissors and trim close to the outline but you don't want to snip it and this is the kind of work that you do under good lighting and you want to make sure that you're taking the time to do it and you go kind of nice and slow 
very sharp scissors, the pointier tip and straight sharp scissors. You don't want a curved tip for this technique because you have a tendency to not cut as straight. The key is to keep it in the hoop. If you pop this out of the hoop, well, you kind of have another whole set of problems that maybe would be a good subject for another television series. <laughs> so let's, why don't we take a look at where we are on, on this piece right here. So now I can go ahead and I can take my roller and pop that out. My hoop's not big enough to get that roller in there. And you know, it can be a little hairy, as they say. There's some fibers extending out, but most of the satin stitches will cover that up. And if not, we can trim it again after the satin is applied. So let's go ahead and add our water soluble right to this, and we'll let it finish in the hoop. And on the single needle machine, what I would do is after this is all trimmed, I again would add another layer of that water soluble stabilizer on top. And I would use tape to secure it in the hoop so that it doesn't flop around. And then just continue on and do the satin stitching. And you can get as brave as you'd like <laughs> and cut as close as you'd like. Okay, so now it has done a tack down and it's secured that water soluble stabilizer to the fabric and now it'll go and do the satin stitching. So let's go ahead and take a look at our hero while that's finishing. You'll notice on this garment, um, I have a bias binding neckline, but the pattern had actually called for a facing. And you know, it's, this is a common mistake that I make I don't think all the way through a project sometimes. So I had done all this beautiful embroidery and then interfaced my facing only to realize that when I sewed that together, the facing, the wrong side, the white, would be visible through my cut work. So yuck, right? I have to do a bias binding like that on this fabric when I go to complete this garment. So when you're working on a complicated embroidery project like this, you most certainly want to think it all the way through and take the time to plan the right steps so that you're successful. Now our machine is just about finishing. In fact, I think I'll just stop it right now. It's done one oval. It's going to move over to, you, to the second oval. But it's just about done. So let's go ahead and stop it and I'll cut the thread. Of course, this machine cuts the thread for it. Many embroidery machines cut the thread for you. And then when I take that off, you can see here is my beautiful oval, satin stitched all the way around. I'm gonna pop this out of the hoop and I would remove that stabilizer, rinse it away, oh my. That's really tacky painter's tape. Rinse it away on the back and the front, and then I would have my beautiful embroidery. You know, so modern cut work to me has just a little bit more pizzazz than the traditional eyelet cotton fabric that you have seen through the years. It has, you know, more stunning layout. It's really a fashion statement. It's not just a tiny little trim. And with today's technique on a multi-needle machine or a single needle machine, this is something that you could do in the comfort of your home and walk out looking like you're on the runway.